What's going on, people? It's Mr. Love back again with the review show. I hope everyone's fitting well. And yes, Nottingham Forest, I've took advantage of today's performance, Forest 2, Sheffield United 1. Good performance for Nottingham Forest. Um, people comment, how you feel about today's results? Um, get involved and what a performance. Um, if, you, if you're on the YouTube channel, please do hit the like button, subscribe if you're new, and comment below, people, how are you feeling about today's performance? Right, we have that little, little harsh rules. If you, if you are new, subscribe, like as well, and so and so. Right, let's get through the panel. Let's start with Matt just can't get enough. <laughs> Matt just can't get enough. How are you feeling? A little bit less anxious than I was this afternoon. Wow. <laughs> All week it's been getting ramped up, ramped up. I couldn't talk before the game. Des interviewed me and I was talking absolutely. Nonsense. Hardly knew what teams were playing or anything. It's just a really, and just re watching it on TV is completely different. Being there was uh, an experience in itself. It's probably not 10 years off my life. So uh, I hope it hope I'll last to the end of this program because, uh, mm. but it's a relief anyway and, and a great result. So I'm uh, absolutely delighted with the way we performed. Mm. Uh, Des, how are you feeling, Des? Fantastic, of course. You know, like Matt said, it, it's, it's been building up. It, it hit me about twelve. It hit me about twelve o'clock last night. You know, I, I don't know why. It just kept me awake, and I thought I felt the enormity of the game. And then when we got there, from the first moment, you know, it's like, wow, this is what's happening. First goal, so important, and all these things. Thankfully, we got it. We played well. We we battered them. <laughs> As everyone see, Matt Des has got Des old and battered them. So, everyone's so got um, yeah, and, and I suppose do you know, as much as I don't want it to be a negative, do you know that that goal at the end? You know, you just feel if if we'd have held on or got another one, it would have been game over. And mm. and again, these things are that nervy. I was kind of beating myself up on it on the over on the train on the way home thinking stop being Marty, stop being this, stop being that but this is why we're football fans isn't it we're creatures of emotion and, and passion and, and these things are going to get to us a little bit so yeah the, the goal makes it a tie, I put something out myself earlier saying it makes it a tie now, a proper cup tie on Tuesday we've got a massive game to look forward to and after the first leg sometimes as soon as that final whistle goes it's all a bit of an anticlimax because mm. we've got to go again. You know, mm. don't get me wrong, that took nothing away from the match. We was going mental. You know, yeah. we, we all sat together, which was nice. It was absolutely brilliant. Faris played well. And, and you just think, bring them on. Bring them on on Tuesday and we'll just finish the job. 100%. Like I said, we all, we all sat together. It was a good feeling. And we, we'll talk about how everyone was feeling. But like, it was, just, it, was just, it was just a great day, spending time with everyone as well. Uh, and last but not least, um, if no one knows who this guy is, he's, he's halfway there. <laughs> it's Stephen, Stephen from, from Wales. How are you doing, Steve? <laughs> yeah, a bit of a croaky voice. I, well, <laughs> that Jack callback goal, I went absolutely... i surprised when you knew me up in Sheffield. I was going absolutely mental. What, what mental, mental, what mental as, um, as Matt does? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I'm, I'm just buzzing. I really don't care they scored that goal at the end, to be honest with you. They're making such a big thing about it. Um, what it was a bit of a sloppy goal. I'm sure we'll go over the game in a bit, but mm. well, I'm just buzzing from it. I we battered them like Des's slogan says. We absolutely tore a new one. They just could not handle us. They they just don't know hit them. Their fans went quiet. We did exactly what pro probably Cooper told the boys to do: shut the crowd up. The atmosphere did sound pretty good coming through the TV. To be fair. Um, but we just, you know, that's, that's what we're going to do with uh, grounds like that. Obviously, they're going to try and do that to us on Tuesday as well. But I think the atmosphere will just get to them on Tuesday. I think they won't know what's hit them. Um, you can tell as well, we are a more vibrant side. They are a bit of an aging side now. Um, you know, you can see they've had a bit of a hangover from their relegation. There's some, you know, they still got players there they had like three or four years ago. And they, 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 they haven't got legs anymore. We just absolutely tore them a new one. Our front three were... Brilliant in our first half. Yeah, 100%. Right, before I, I, I get to Matt, I'm just looking for the comments. Uh, Adam says, hi. Uh, Callum <laughs> says, please, no, negatively, fantastic result. Take them sit ground and, and take them apart. You reds. No, no one's been negative. I think 
like it's, just, it's just that consolation goal they had at the end of the yeah. week, clinging on to it. I think the media are as well. Sky Sports were clinging on to that, giving Chef Knight did hope. Oh, yeah, yeah. there's a real narrative, wasn't there? Yeah, of course it is. Like, it's like, oh, you've it. missed all these chances. We yeah. went toe to toe with what happens as well, guys. Is, um, hard. If we'd have gone there and won 2 1 in the league and come away, we'd have been absolutely buzzing. And absolutely. that's all I'm talking about with that. That sort of anti-climax feel. Don't get me wrong. Absolutely amazing. Buzzing for the result. What a performance. Feel we can finish the job. But it's just not over. And, you know, mm. it's that thing where you just go, this is playoffs. This is playoffs. Yeah. You know? yeah, but the thing is, it should never be over in the first leg. And it was just because we were so good that it should have been. And it could have been. Yeah. It really should have been. It should have been over in the first 30 minutes, shouldn't it? You know, could have been three up some, easily. I heard some guys on the train making the point that, in a way, in a way, you know, we'll, we'll see how it pans out in the second leg. Is it necessarily a bad thing? It means Forrest have, way, to, Forrest have mm. still got to go out there and, and do the business where, you know, 2 nil sometimes you can get a bit lethargic, you can try and manage it out for too long. It might just give us that impetus to go and kill the game off. And then everybody well, feels better for the rest of the game. Well, well look that, at it. It's two It's two games. It's the same as if they scored in the first two minutes of the next game. Sort of that's thing. my point. So that's going to be my better, point, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So it's better to kind of have it now, have the warning in advance, because they could just as easily score in the first two minutes of the next yeah. game. They could make do it more nervous. Yeah. Yeah. I think, you know, look, we turned up. We were the best us, which is what they've always been focusing on and we out footballed them. I was just surprised they were so open and they tried to play football. And I thought mm. there'd be a lot more cage, but they were wide open. We were, we were running them ragged, weren't we? We were pressing them. We played our game and they put in a hell of an effort out there in the sun. I think it will suit us better in the, the evening when it's a bit cooler, hopefully. Mm. Um, uh, they, they, we just turned up and that's all we have to do. We're better than them. And we proved it today. They tried, I'm just surprised they tried to go toe to toe with us and they couldn't live with us. Exactly. Well, we noticed, Matt, what they tried to do, and, and the last time I seen it so striking was against Blackpool. They they put four, they put four on our defenders. You know, don't do that because you're going to get in trouble. But I think we'd almost talk them into the fact that if they press us back, if they pin us in, you know, they can get amongst us. But they couldn't because as soon as we got the ball, we outnumbered them all over the pitch, and it was Blackpool who fell. Mm. fell Foul, foul of that, you know, they yeah. conceded three goals. We could have done exactly the same to Sheffield United yeah. today as what we did to Blackpool a few weeks ago. They got the best result they could possibly have dreamt of from that game. Yeah. You know, 2-1 yeah. is an incredible result for them. They should have lost 4-0 or something like that, really. So, mm. they'll be happy in that respect. But in what actually happened, the narrative of it, what, what actually occurred, the qualitative side of it, rather than just the goal stats... They were torn a new one, like you said. You know, they were torn a complete new one, and they'll be bricking it for Tuesday, won't they? Or they should be. If they're not, they're going to have to come up with something new because all they did was was long balls, which we all thought were offside. And they put they weren't uh, most of them, and then in the second half they did try and get amongst us, but both times we hit them. We hit them back, didn't we? We handled it. Yeah. It was a little bit angsty when they were going for us in the second half, but we handled it, and then we hit them back. We were just as dangerous throughout. So you know. Um, there's 153 people in. Thank you everyone for taking the time to watch this. Um, right, let's talk about Corbett's goal. And we, we might as well talk to Matt about it because he, he, I've never seen. I thought <laughs> I thought I was bad screaming at the pitch, but Matt was. So, yeah, he raised you raised know, those tapes. <laughs> <laughs> people, the vlog's out tomorrow at 10 a.m. So people, don't forget to watch it. I've never. I've texted Michaela saying that I've never seen Matt scream like a bitch. So she, she has probably, but they. <laughs> <laughs> but um, how happy like we know, as we know, Matt's a massive combat fan. But for him, we've got, we've got to praise Sturridge as well because absolutely, I, Sturridge, because, yeah, yeah, because he he, he did played fight, well. He played well. He he fight by crossed it in. Zigano, he and should Joe, Joe for the little shimmy and the ball into Sam as well. It was a good goal. And, yeah. and Ben Osborne for slipping over. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It was, it was brutal, but for Corbett again, I think, how, how many goals has he got now? Is, it, is that his fifth goal? Four. Four. It was a good goal, wasn't it, Matt, to be fair? He, he was smart. He took his, he took his, he showed a bit of composure, which others probably didn't today. They're a little bit snatched a bit occasionally, but he, he, 
what's he doing up there? He's in the six yard box, at, you know, whatever it was, the 15th minute, whenever it was, we scored. You know, he's he's a brilliant pro. He's playing out of position the whole season. You know, arguably he's player of the season, really, because he he's done it for the team. And, you know, he's the first name you put on the team sheet for me, wherever you pick him. And, you know, he's fantastic. And what can you say? You know, couldn't happen to a nicer guy. Mm. Um, there's one for Des, and this is from Kieran. The four pound forty nine. Thank you for the one pound ninety nine. <laughs> Des, please talk about the cafe with his celebration. <laughs> what a guy! What a guy! <laughs> he is. He's turned in not just my hero. He's turned into the ultimate club man. He is the club man. <laughs> yeah. He is the guy yeah. who, who yeah. don't play all season but gets a little trophy at the end of it to say <laughs> you have won. You have won at life. Do you know, that's what Kafu is. What what he is, he's what a professional. Do you know? It, and and he, he he had his detractors, didn't he? I called it against in that Swansea game and a little bit before. I like what he did around the pitch when he needed to. And when he is called upon, do you know, he comes on and does it. He doesn't sulk. Do you know? It's probably it's likely that he might not even be there next season. Do you know? We don't know the ins, ins and outs. But in terms of that spirit around the camp, what Steve Cooper's instilled into the team. If you're, I've, I've managed teams, I've played in teams and managed teams. If you've got your subs on side, because we all know what football's like, we're all mardy, we're all men and get, get passionate about it and, and don't want to be left out. If you've got your subs on side and celebrating like this guy, you know, you've got something good going, haven't you? And, and that's what I absolutely love it. Love it when he gets on the pitch and you see him with that goal at Swansea, you know. <laughs> Loving it. <laughs> <laughs> People in the comments, God, does it, does it do all to, to your nonsense? <laughs> uh, um, Steve, we, we had so many chances first off, man. I think Ryan Yates had one, Brennan had two, Storage had one. First off, we should have batted them first half, shouldn't we? It, get, it was getting to a point. It was getting ridiculous, wasn't it? It was just like, it was like, like I was getting messaged off some of my mates, like, why you, <laughs> you should be fine now, like, like, this game should be just done and dusted. We shouldn't even consider Tuesday. You know, we should just turn up Tuesday and we, sh we should be four final up. And they got, like I said earlier, they crowd just didn't know what hit them. Like, they were panning to their, their faces in the crowd. The like fans were sitting there like this. You know, I was loving it. You know how much I hate Sheffield United. I was, um, <laughs> yeah. And I was A lot of people do. Yeah, when I, I look at the Johnson's goal later, then I'm not gonna lie, I did have a tear in my eye because seeing John in the crowd, yeah. you know, just it, it came Shout 20 out. years full circle of that moment, you know. I just so you know proud as a Forest fan, but going back to the first half, we absolutely tore my new one. It, it was just like so great to see us go forward like that. Like I went in the second balls as well, like everything just went for us, didn't it? You know, Garner and Yates picking up the loose ball midfield, Spence making his runs again. Jo the only thing we just we're just a shame we just want clinical. Yates is header. Uh, um, John who had a set in, in the second half. They defender on it. Made out of a block. To be fair to him, Egan was it. Now that could have yeah. that saved them. from, you know, going to the, the Tuesday game probably because it would have been three 0 and I think it would have been over. Um, but yeah, that first half was just frustrating. <laughs> just like happy, but yet yeah, like pulling my head. Steve, you're not being paying your, you're not Steve, you're not paying your, your Welsh bill. <laughs> no, it's just Wales, isn't it? <laughs> you know? He's gone right. It's, it's like you are vision is on tonight. I shouldn't mention that, but <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> well, before you go to I don't know where he's gone, but we'll talk to you, uh, Matt. Is it now like he frustrates he, he frustrates some some fan base sometimes? And he sometimes you we always complain about that number 10 role all the time. And sometimes you play good. It, it, it did sometimes. I, I watched it back today. It wasn't as bad as I thought I'm watching on, on TV. But what, what do you think about his performance today? So are you talking about Zink, do you? Yeah. No, <laughs> yeah. My, my, my wife, my, my wife's <laughs> wife falls as well. He's back. He's back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, was just, I, was, I was just telling Matt, I was just telling Matt about Zink, you know, like... Yeah. From, from watching it live, it was frustrating me as hell. But on TV, he didn't frustrate me because he was he's trying hard to be that number 10 role, but he just didn't get into the game as much as he'd love to. Love to. Matt? Well, 
sorry, just quick, one quick thing to say about Zink. What he did do on TV at a pickup, he was drawing defenders to him. He was drawing two or three men towards him, even though he didn't give the ball as much as he should have. He was making a lot of runs. He did work his socks off to be fair to him, but that's my input anyway. I'm saying. What, what do you I, think? I think, I think he makes the team work, and obviously Cooper likes him. He picks him every opportunity he can get, really. So, um, but yeah, I felt like he dwelt on the ball a little bit too much yeah. today. I, I think he's got a big game in him, and I'm just hoping it's one of the next two games because I think he's. We haven't seen the best of him, and I think he's a better. I think he's a good player. I think he makes the team work. He works tactically, but as an individual, he hasn't hit the heights he's capable of. I'm sure. I'm sure he's like 75, 80 percent of what he should be. And if we get that extra 20 percent in the next couple of games, hopefully, he could be the kind of guy that turns the tables. And talking about subs, what about Lolly? And and the we'll other talk about him later. Is, we'll talk about him later. You... For, no, and, and jo Jono is celebrating. I doubt he's ever wait, celebrated wait, 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 a goal. Matt, 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 he wait, scored Matt, as much Matt, as that. Matt, Matt, wait, wait, what? because he's here. He's, 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 he's got he's a comment on it right now. There we are. There he is. <laughs> the well, tell us, comment. I don't think he's ever enjoyed a goal more than that one. Right, Matt, Jono, sure right, Jono, we, we, everyone saw the celebration with you when <laughs> dessert. <laughs> but we're going to talk about Brennan later on. But Brennan, yeah, shout out to Jono for that. But we saw yeah. the video of this. He went mad. He went mad. He was worse than me. People see the vlog tomorrow. I went, I went mad when Brennan scored. Crazy. <laughs> but um, that, that's something we'll talk about later on the show. But, Des, I'm talking about first off, like, how poor was Sheck United first off, man? They, they were, <laughs> like, Osborne, like, this is, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to pick out Osborne. The whole team of Sheck United. They were just poor, shocking first off, weren't they? So it was absolutely shocking, but but I think I think they just played into our hands. I mentioned the putting the four up top against the defenders, but you know putting the pressure on. They've heard all the hype about getting at us and doing this and doing that. We can deal with most things that that come our way, you know. So like saying that Blackpool game, as soon as Brennan got the space to do what he had to do and and get down that line and put a few dangerous balls in, you know. We're creating the better, bigger chances, you know, and, and ultimately we, we took one through Colback. But and, and you touched on Osborne there. Do you know, if, if I'd have asked for one thing today from Sheffield United, it would have been to, and I'm not having a go at Osborne, you know, he's he, he's a good, reliable player, but I'd, I would have asked for them to play Osborne against Colback because Colback had more pace. Mm. You know, Colback had more pace and he dealt with him because you know what Osborne does. He does that thing where he goes that way, and then he comes this way, and then he goes that way. You know, <laughs> it, played, it played directly into our hands, and, and I just don't think they had much. They had the guy, and I know you mentioned the first half, but the guy Berg, Berg you know, he's a quality player. He, 30 million. 30 million. He's an absolute <laughs> brilliant footballer, you know, and, and he's a Premier League player. He's a, he's a beast in that league. But again, you know, with us sort of soaking up what they could throw at us and hitting them on the break, I, it's all a bit of a myth now, isn't it? This get up forest thing, you can get amongst them, you can do this. I don't think you can. You know, I think the best way you can do it is try and sort of work on us a little bit rather than go at us. Because as soon as you do it, you've got the boys up front. Do you know, Zink and Argo didn't have the best game today, you know, in my opinion, but he didn't. He didn't do bad, and he's always dangerous. He's got that turn in him. He's got that ball in him. Do you know, one of those gets through. I always sort of question his final ball a little bit, but if it gets through, you know, and if if they split the defence with, with Spence and Johnson on one side, you know, and McKenna sort of laying up and making an extra left back on the other side, we. It, it, we just become very difficult to play against, but it becomes very easy for us because they're all over the place. They're chasing shadows, and that's almost what they were doing. We forced them to chase shadows all over the pitch, and and when we're doing that, you know, they were they were going to run out run out of steam a little bit. They had that second win because they they had to have, to be honest. We had to come at us second half, and and Berg took control, and we we sat off a little bit, a little bit guilty of that. But, again, we got the better opportunities, the bigger opportunities. And I know we'll talk about it sort of going forward, but 
I, I sense that's what's going to happen in the second game. They, they're going to have to go for it now. If, if they went for it from the off thinking we've got to get Forest early, they've definitely got to get us early at the City ground and we're just going to pick them off. You know, the, 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 the big boys and perhaps Davis will play a more significant role and, and really sort of change the game on Tuesday. 100%. There's 190 people playing. Thank you very much for everyone that for watching this as well. Subscribe to my channel, please. Hit the like button as well. People as well, subscribe to Dude Daily as well. He's on uh, 100 and, what, what, 200 and what, you're on debt? 524. Oh, he doesn't even know this guy. 524. Are you people, going to incentivise it? Don't, yeah, don't do it now. Do it when he needs to subscribe. I went to, I went to watch Dude Daily today and I've never seen him run so much. So people, <laughs> don't always subscribe to Dude Daily. Can I tell you yeah. a little story? We met a guy called Derek who was 78 and he's never been on YouTube, I can imagine. <laughs> and Daw's got his phone in his hand, Derek's phone in his hand, subscribing to Daw and Daw. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to me, he was on my channel. He said, what channel was it on? Daw and Daw. How do I watch it? Give me your phone. Subscribe. Watch it 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. <laughs> Simple as that. So, people, the vlog will be out 10 o'clock tomorrow. And um, it's it, it good to see. Um, I think David has put another comment as well. Um I love it. When Jack scored, I saw green people cry. Yeah, that was Matt. <laughs> it was David, he told him about, he told him about Matt because Matt was next to me screaming like a bitch. He, no, <laughs> he was so but it's going to lead to taking Tuesday. Like, it is a, good, it is a massive lead. And well, as you, Stephen, like I said, um, Des touched on Sandberg, 30, 30 million pound man, I think it was. But let's talk about Ryan Yates and, and Cardinal, like, Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy G. Them, to, them two as well. I've, I've Who's, 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 the, who's the midfielders for Sheffield United? There was Sandberg, Ollie or, or, uh, Norwood, and Frank. Ollie Norwood. I'm fairly like experienced players as well. And Ryan Yates and Jimmy G played. I think mean, they dealt with it there. Yeah, but it goes back to what I was saying earlier that these boys, like Fleck and Norwood, they've been around the block a while. It, like, they're good pros, but they are aging pros. We've got a young midfield. Like, the only thing I'd say about Yates that would concern me today was even though he's a warrior and he's playing through that, you know, a short injury. Sure. I so I, I think I would have took I would have taken him off. He just looked a bit battered to me. I think I would have wrapped him up a little bit earlier because he just kept he went down over three times, I think. Um I know he was fighting through it, but um I thought Garner's free um not free kicks corners were a bit off today. His set set pieces were a bit off, but um, in as far as the midfield, yeah. You know, up matching up together uh, against uh, Norwood and Fleck. I thought them two handled them really well, I think. And I would say the, the most dangerous player is not even Berg, it's Gibbs White. Gibbs White. And they said on commentary, right, that if Cooper had been there uh, from the beginning of the season, he would have been in a forest shirt this season because he's a big admirer of Gibbs White. Um, and he, he's the only... St- He's the only player that worries me in that team. I know they've got like, like some Billy Sharp out and players like that, but he's the only player today that give me any kind of nervousness. Otherwise, the other players, even the Bergs, I know he's a good player, like Dad said, but the other players did not worry me at all today, to be fair. Mm. Only Gibbs White. That's, right. the, that's the only threat they got. And from set pieces. That, that was my only threat as well with, with, with Gibbs White. Like, he didn't do nothing. And, and so I'm going to ask you, uh, Matt, about the defence again. I thought, we know it's called in that just a minute, but they, 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 did, they did the job. Do you think they did the job um, today? I thought they were really good, the defence. Um, all the centre halves were excellent. I, 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 like I said, I got to about the 80th minute, and Colbert hasn't put a foot wrong either at all. I don't think he's done anything wrong, and actually, he's struggled to remember anything he's done wrong since he's put, been, well, all season virtually, but playing left back for sure. Um, the centre halves all quality. I thought Cook was. You know, particularly outstanding and relatively busy, but that they handled it pretty well. I mean, they like I say, I think they were doing those long balls and they were trying to draw some of the defenders out. I think their their theory was that McKenna and Cook were a little bit immobile and they wanted to kind of move the the, the sideboard around and then we'll get behind it and stuff. And it kind of worked up to a point, but with no end result. So, you know, they they tried something and you know. The defence handled it, didn't they? Like, like Des was saying, really, we've got an answer to most things, haven't we? Whether it's we just deal with it or whether we can hit them back, we, we've got an answer. And um, yeah, what can you say? That's it. Mm. There's 180 people in. 
if you've got any questions for me in the panel, please do. Um, can I, sorry, can I just pick on Matt's point there, right? Yeah. Um, obviously, the first half, the only negative of the first half was they got behind us a few times yeah. from the corner. Morrell played them on side once, Spence played them on mm. one. You know, obviously, you boys it's in the so stadium good. can't pick it up on TV. Obviously, nah. they do the lines not on TV. But mm. the thing I would say is that, it, that between the two teams, if that was us, we would have been in behind. And with our pace, them. They, got, they got no pace. Mm. So That's when they I mean. did get behind, yeah. I was confident that the likes of um, you know Cook and McKenna could sweep up at the back because mm. we were playing a high line sometimes. So that was a bit of a worry they yeah. did get behind, but the lack of yeah. pace gave, gave me confidence that they weren't going to get far. But that just proves again, doesn't it, Steve? That Steve Cooper's done his own work. He yeah. knows what he's dealing with. They had no strikers. That that was the problem today. Yeah. More than anything in their team. Mm. Gibbs White is a good player. Berg's a good player where they play, but they're not out and out strikers and they had nothing. There was one time, Des, right? In Dai and Gibbs White were in the middle of the pitch <laughs> and they're the two strikers, you know, getting the ball in midfield. So, yeah, like you said, they have got no out and out striker. Mm. I think there's 108, 108 people in. Uh, thank you, everyone, for t- tuning in. Right, let's talk about second half and we talk about. Um, Let's talk about Joe Lolle. And uh, we mentioned Diganel. Uh, for me personally, like I said, he keep going in and out. But Lolle coming on, and I, I'm going to ask you, why, why are you smiling so much, Des? Why are you smiling so much? Because I love this guy. Love <laughs> Lolle. <laughs> there, there's a comment in there as well saying Des's predictions come up because he's done, he, he's done something, hasn't he? I knew he was going to impact a game somewhere because he's got that much ability. You know, he's got so much ability. The guy, he's, he's had his issues this season, of course. He, he, it didn't work for him under under Hooten and he's been carrying injuries and things and went out of form. But he had something in him, didn't he? And today, it, it wasn't it wasn't the biggest impact Joe Lolly's ever made, but, but it was important. Mm-hmm. One of the most important sort of impacts he's made in a game. And, and that's what we wanted, and that's where sort of later on in games, and and he, he looked again after after he sort of worked that opportunity for Johnson, he looked like he wanted to shoot again. You know, he he got a lot of confidence from that moment, and it might not again worked out with the shooting, but he wanted to shoot, he wanted to be on the ball, he was confident, he wanted to beat a man as well, and and that's all we want, isn't it? When we've got a confident Joe Lolly. We've got one hell of a footballer. And that's what's really important. Whether whether he's an impact player these days or eventually works his way back into the team, when you've got a confident Joe Lolly and somebody who's prepared to hit the ball from 25, 30 yards, you've got you've got another asset. And and that's why I'm smiling because I I, I just wanted him to come in and do something. Still think there's a little bit more left in Joe Lolly this season. Okay. I'm going to extend on that. Prediction, but uh, no, uh, it, it makes me it makes me happy, you know, because it's Joe Lolly. And Matthew, Matthew, Matt, like I said, Lolly, he come on, and he, I think he did well to set Brennan Johnson's goal up. And um, it's, so, it's so good, like I said, with, with, with Brennan, like he sometimes he could go quiet sometimes, but he took his goal very good, didn't he, Matt? I it went was mad. a brilliant finish. I it was dessert. a brilliant finish, actually. At the time, it looked relatively easy, but he really finished it well. And uh, there was the other one that I think followed it, where they got a really good block in, which uh, would have been a second. I always had a feeling he'd get to 20 goals, and I thought he was going to do it today. and He could have done. You know, he, he had a fantastic game. He was all over the place and got like man of the match from a few places, I gather. Um, but yeah, Lolly was, was incredibly energetic sub, wasn't he? And pouncing on the, what's it, Egan... Did, did really well and a great finish. So, yeah, another, like, like we keep saying, another day, the only thing you can pl- complain about is the in the final third, just not taking those chances. We just had, we just didn't have the, quite the run of the ball, I think, though. It was a lot, there were those two crosses in the first half that just wasn't enough on them, or they're just a little bit behind or in front or whatever. Uh, it was just one of those ifs and buts sort of thing. Another day, they fall slightly different, a little bit more pace on the ball, a little less awkward, and you'll score them all. And so, we were, we were unfortunate, and you don't, you know, playoffs anything can happen. So, you know, 
I personally thought the referee was awful until I rewatched it, and then I felt he was a lot more reasonable than I thought at the time. And I, but um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I was going bonkers at him, but he still didn't really give us much. I don't think he, he you know, there was that one time. Who was it? Jack again did a brilliant turn. He did those two things. He did one in the first half down the line, which I think was to um, Brennan who crossed it in, and Surridge nearly finished. That was one of those crosses. And then when Jack beat their midfielder. And then he played the advantage. And then as soon as we took the blinking advantage, yeah. it blew and came. yeah, that was bonkers. You know, yeah. that was a, that was potentially another goal almost. So um, I can't remember the question, but yeah, brilliant second goal. They're all good. I don't care how they come. Mm. I was excited. I think we were talking about uh, Davis. Um, everyone was worried about is Davis going to be on the bench? Is Davis is Davis going to start? Stephen, was you excited then? Um, for you, was, um, Davis was on back on the bench. Oof. Massive boost, you know. Yeah, I had a bit of a chuckle to myself. Um, when did we bring him on? Like the seventieth minute, about that time, yeah. And I was just thinking, wow, like that, that's some player to bring off the bench. And Sheffield United like, must be thinking, whoa, it's like, you know, you've got people like Johnson, Lolly run at us, and now we've got Davis running at us. You know, that's that's a really good asset to have come off the bench. You know, at the seventieth, they tire in. You know. I don't know if you boys felt it as well, just before they scored that goal at the end. It was a, it was really weird towards the end of the game. It was like, it was a moment, like five minutes before the end, we were just playing in the half in the final third and just it felt like um, it was petering out. Like, Chef Knight, had no urgency. Like, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, we just winning every second ball and he was just like, kill him off, kill him off, get our third. Davis was picking the ball up, Johnson was picking the ball up, Lolly was picking the ball up. It was just, you know, Get then we consider that late goal, but again, just prior to that, it just felt really. Chef Knight did just tailed off, and they must have thought like we just been bombarded you. And I, you could tell with their manager after the game, he is nervous for Tuesday. And this oh, is yeah, when I've he, seen it. Did you, see, did you see his interview at the end of the game? Yeah, yeah. He's seen, it's so he's seen a yeah, it was so I was like, what? Yeah, he's. But they were saying like, like, the Sky yeah. Sports. Sky Sports are clinging on to their goal at the end. To make it a game, yeah. they they are hoping that gives us a game or two. You know, gives the the, the whole TV experience a game for the yeah. neutral. But, you know, but we all we all know as Forest fans, if we turn up on Tuesday, we we can easily just brush them aside. This is not being arrogant, but we could easily just brush them aside three 0 with a second thought. And as as Forest fans know this, a lot of neutrals might go, "Oh, you're overlooking them." Of course, we can't overlook them. But they are clinging on. I can't believe much they were clinging on. They were they were talking more about that goal after the game than the way we battered them for ninety minutes almost. That's what Sky Sports is. That's, that's all they're doing. Like, oh, they're make, I think they're, they're going to try and make the show. It is like it is a big game, but like said, we battered them. But oh. Sports, TV like Sky Sports or whoever, they're not going to give us credit for the way we played today. But it is, it is what it is. Uh, there's 194 people in. Thank you everyone for coming in as well. Hit, hit the like button, please, if you can. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Subscribe to Daily as well. And if you want some merch as well from Mr. Matt, from J- Matt, just can't do it. Go on, <coughs> I'm I'm going to go for my big season's review souvenir poster tomorrow, I think. I think there's going to be enough meat in the playoffs for another one after that. So I'm going to pull the trigger tomorrow, I think. So watch out for that one. Yeah, um, I think <laughs> yeah, I'm so excited. Under, under the bus, that's all, Matt. Uh, Matt was crying at Brennan. Go, I think everyone was. Oh, no I, I was, everyone was like, <laughs> if John, like, if John's watching, we saw like Michael is showing the clip. Um, it was it's the up. first one since Bartman's goal those years ago. That was that was definitely, but so yeah. Let's hope there's a few more tears before the end of the season. Right. Of happy this tears. This is right. If if I don't give us nonsense, people can clip it. If, if we win on, if we can go to Wembley <laughs> on Tuesday, I'm going to cry like a bitch because I've never been to <laughs> because, like I said, I, I have never been to Wembley before. I said to all the, I said to all to the, the mainstream media's and all that, and I was on, I was on talks about two this morning, and I said. I am not going to Wembley till Forest get there. So yeah, I'm, yeah, it was a part of problem. Another problem for me today. Going on radio too. Um, I'm gonna go for you. I'm gonna ask you, Steve. Like I said, uh, another like a like I said, it was a fantastic performance. But like I said, the, the goal that Seth Knight scored, it was it, it, it wasn't handball. It, it, was, it was handball. Never no. handball. Never handball. But even if yeah, even if they did. 
to score in the likes of his 90th minute, whatever it was. Like, it was still a, a fantastic performance and a proud for, for his first fans just to witness, wasn't it? Yeah, what I love, though, it, what I love about Steve Cooper's interview off the game, right? And they mentioned that goal. And like, what I love about Cooper, he just kind of brushed it off. He said, that's football. It happens. Why, why dwell on it? And Matt hit the nail on the head earlier. The point I've been making, right, is even if we won 2 0, it's just like them scoring in the first two minutes at the city ground anyway. To make us, I, I agree with Matt. I'd rather go into 2 1 than 2 0 because they, they score in the first five minutes at the city ground. We are playing then nervously. So we know where we are for Tuesday. Yes, it was a sloppy goal to concede, but from the off on Tuesday, get Adam, get an early goal. They then got to score three to win. And there's, I don't think there's any way back for him. But it was a sloppy goal. Samba was in no man's land. He kind of the city's blocked and so on. But you know, it's it's one of them things. But that's what I just I just love Cooper's attitude towards the goal. He just kind of went, yeah. It's you can see the confidence is oozing out of him. You we know, thought we could outplay them, and we outplayed them. Now we know we can outplay them, and they know we can outplay them. Yeah. So all we got to do on Tuesday is outplay them again. And you know and, you can do that, and we we, we only won two one, and we should have won about six one or something. Yeah. But you know we could play the same on Tuesday, and we could get beaten two nil or something and lose. It can happen. But you just that's football, isn't it? We've just got to turn up and be the best we can be. And if we are, we will win. You know that's a fact. Apart from the you know the, what happens in football, that sometimes you don't. But that's all we can do. We can only be the best. We can be, can't we? Because at the end of the day, it, it would have been exactly the same. If they had scored in the first minute, right, mm. and we had scored two late goals, oh, it would have been the same. It, it would have been yeah. the same same result yeah. anyway. It's just this changed the mentality of it. Like they've scored late yeah. and it's, it's made them something to cling on to. But their manager knows by his interview afterwards, he is breaking it. You can tell. Yeah. He's got to come should... up with something completely different. And I don't think he's got any any... What can you no. do? I don't think he's got the tools available to do the job. No. And he knows mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, 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 like, like I said, we, we mentioned a Sefer Nandi manager bricking it and St- Cooper, he, he's had experience in the playoffs with Swansea back-to-back and that, but that was the second leg is so, it's so important for his boys fans because, like I said, we've had so much pain. Well, I'm, I'm not going to mention the games. Like, you know, I'm going to mention them. Swansea, Blackpool, Yeovil... Yeah. Uh, who else is there? Um, Definitely United. United. The lot, but <laughs> we can yeah, cross like that said, one off now. Yeah, we can cross the one off now. Like I said, but I, like I said, <laughs> I said to people right before before the, the game, I was so confident that we can get we can get a result. And I'm not I'm not gonna tell you what's prediction because you'll see the vlog ten o'clock, and I seen I think it was a comment from Hadi. Hadi, the comp the vlogs at ten o'clock in the morning as usual. So. I imagine it now should be out in the morning, 10 o'clock. Tell them last few days, like I said, this, this second leg is so important for his voice fans. And like today, we just completely battered him. Like, what do, like, as a voice fan, what do you think Chef United, United need to do? Because, like I said, their striker, their main striker today, he didn't even do nothing. The, all, it was Gibbs White and Sandy Berg. The, was was more dangerous than them, but so what? What do you think they need to do to change the, the tie around? Well, I'm not sure it's going to happen, but I think what they need to do is somehow patch Billy Sharp together and get him on the pitch, because <laughs> because it like in many games, he so much sort of happens in and around what Billy Sharp does, and it's amazing that we're still talking about this. You know, it's amazing that a guy who's been wrote off so many times. It still, still makes such an impact. That guy is a fantastic footballer. Honestly, I, I can't wait. I can't say enough about Billy Sharp. One of the cleverest footballers I've ever seen because he isn't naturally. I won't say he's not naturally gifted. He scores goals, so that wins out every day. But he's not. He's not naturally sort of agile and fit. He just works these positions and does things that makes them happen. And I feel without him. You know, they haven't got the nous at the top end of the pitch. For all Morgan Gibbs White's um skill, you know, trickery, and for what what Berg does in terms of sort of bullying the midfield, I don't think it's enough. I don't think it's enough against what we've got. The the, the Great Wall of Nottingham as we call it. You know, yeah. I don't think they've got enough to get round round 
Warrell, McKenna and Cook, I just think we, we can easily cope with it. So unless they get a striker and, and literally the, their, their best striker, which is Billy Sharp still on the pitch, I don't see them doing too much because they're going to come, they're going to they're gonna huff and puff, of course. You know, it, I, I think they're going to come and just go hard again. And that's why I see is I think Steve said, we could win this game 3 now. We could quite easily. What we don't want to do, of course, is concede, which, which yeah. is obvious. But um, if we concede early, then all that momentum swings back the other way. And this is playoff football. So you just end up with a basketball game, which Scott Parker talk, spoke about in mm. in that game. So I, I just think we've got enough to deal with them. We'll be able to cope. In many ways, in, in sort of contradicting what I just said, they might actually come, come, try and sit back for half a game or something like that, you know, and and then look to hit a second half late, try and take it for extra time and penalties. That might be a way through for them, but I just don't think they've got enough because at the end of the day, they've got to score a goal. The onus is now on them to win a football match. Um, and, and whilst I'd love, love Forrest to sort of go out there and, and just tear, tear them another new one, um, <laughs> I think I think the onus on them coming out and, and they've not got enough at the back either. So whilst I've sort of mentioned one end of the pitch, you know, we, we know what Jack Robinson is. I'm not I'm not having a go at the guy. You know, we know what well we we've seen what Mepham is and, and people like that. They're just not quick enough, agile enough and clever enough to deal with what we've got now. You know, Ghana, Ghana could be really significant on Tuesday. He could, he could be the real key player in, in sort of controlling that midfield and playing that right ball and, and getting his in behind. I, I think that's going to be a, a really sort of important battle. And obviously, sort of Berg will try and do a bit of a job on him and around him. But I think that could be crucial. And ultimately, I just don't think they've got enough. I love doing Des to talk to like he talks. So I could talk and listen to Des for all day. <laughs> People in the comments, do you think I could listen to Des all day? Stephen... Mike, do you think he listens to us all day talking like that? I, I, think, I think, you could, I think you could if you give him the chance. You definitely could listen to him all day. Keep in the comments. What, <laughs> Try to do that if he's to listen to you as long as you want. <laughs> no, uh, <laughs> a, I can do that. Right. I'm like, hey, this is Des's show. It's like, yes, I just, just, just talk to us. I want to just talk. No, people we're just... not famous anymore. <laughs> uh, right, people, uh, we need, we, we've got 43 minutes. Um, who was your? I'll go for the panel later on as well. About who's your, was their man of match today? Um, there's 209 people. Thank you everyone for taking the time and uh, watching the show. Um, I'm on 77 likes. If we get to 100 likes by the end of the show as well, please do. If you get, please get to your know get there to 550 by the end of the show, please. His link is below. Please go and subscribe to do daily if you can. And if you, you've got to watch my vlog tomorrow because when we're going home. I'll do my outro, and Craig was doing, did a bet for me. So, people, you've got to watch my vlog tomorrow. I did, I, did, I did a little bet. So, watch it tomorrow night. Watch it tomorrow morning, and see what the bet is. So, people, make sure you go and subscribe to me because it's gonna be That's really tease, interesting. It? It's a little tease, but please yeah. go and watch it because who's been media training you? This is <laughs> this is getting all very slick. Yeah, like I said, people, you got go and watch Mainstream the show. Media. Go and watch it, but like I said, it was it was like it was mad. I said I mentioned like we mentioned like everyone. Um, I mentioned Matt, like he he went mad. I've never seen Matt. I think I, I was watching um some old videos and I think what game was it? Birmingham away, Matt. I never seen you mad like that. But today you went absolutely crackers. Like he looks cold, bad. But like I said, for Brennan Johnson, he was crying. You was crying. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where you're getting this stuff from. You were crying. <laughs> like, it's good to cry. It's good, it's good to be emotional. Like I said, I was nearly, I went mad. Like, the camera was palmed on me because I was, you know you know what I do. I always like get the camera just like to palm it, see how other fans feel emotional. But Des, even Des like was going sick and no mad. Like, I mean, when you're trying, like, what I do, I think like, Every time I, like, I give Des a um, oh, Des had a finger match. Yes! That's how Des feels. And it's good to be like, be that Forest fan, so happy, 
You're almost like Wembley. And I think we needed it, though, didn't we, after this week? I think all of us have just been getting wound up, wound up, probably. No, but I was calm, though, Matt. Everyone was... Yeah. I think I was a calm one because... Before the game, right, uh, 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 a little sneak view on this, I was getting everyone's prediction. Half people were saying 1-1. One, one. Oh, me and... Who was it? It was me and a couple of us were saying 3-1, 1-1. And that, uh, and um, what was your prediction? Gary said three one. I yeah, said, said three. I said one nil. Yeah, I sort of said one nil too. Yeah, and I think it was going one one. Everyone kept saying one one. Every, everyone would have been happy with the draw, wouldn't they? I everyone wasn't. would have taken the draw. The is too easy to predict in these games. You know, oh, yeah. they all finish the draw, so let's say it's going to be one one. No, no. Just look at the teams and think how this game could go. And again, I think most most people, uh, of course, lots of us have got blind optimism at times. But when you look looked at the game, you weren't that far wrong, were you, though, if they'd have nicked another one? It depends what you do. But, but look, every time we doubt this team, you know, if you watch this team this season, they've never let us down, have they? You know, they've had a couple of blips. But every time they've had a blip, they've bounced back. I, you know, the end of the season has been a bit different. You barely call it a blip. You know, stretch to the breaking point and they didn't quite get over the line. But they always bounce back. And they're all good footballers and they're all good people and they're all on the same page. The whole mm. squad, the coaches, the managers, the fans, the even, you know, the boardroom, everyone. And, and how powerful is that? You know, and they all believe in each other and they're all, you know... On, on the same page, and it's hard to beat, and we're showing that. Mm. I, was, I, was, I was asked you, Stephen, and Stephen is to the radio. I was on the radio today, and you were saying about Steve Cooper. How does Steve Cooper do it? Like, when we're not, I think you can mention the game against Bournemouth <coughs> and Hull. How is Forest are going to make it this, the next level step up? And like, I think they proved it. Because when everyone kept, when everyone kept saying, oh, 1 1, 1 1, I'm like, no. That's been better than that. I'll ask you, Stephen. Like, your you, your prediction was one one, right? <laughs> why though? You tell me the reason why you chose one one. Um, probably because of the form they went into it, they didn't come into bad form. A couple of games I've seen, the last couple of games I've seen of them, they have been pretty good. You know, aggressive, high intensity. You know. They, I know everyone was looking at that Fulham game. Oh, they battered Fulham 4 0. Fulham are on the beach. <laughs> They've won the league. They don't get we beat Fulham away when Fulham needed to win to win the league. So that that didn't I was just brushing that off. I didn't care about that. Um but no, I only said one one, because like Des said, it's probably the most comfortable, you know, it was, it was a kind of safety prediction, really. If I really wanted to go for it, I would have said two one forest, really. Um I I, ref, I always had a good feeling they would get a goal. Um, but again, this I, I think everyone's given Chef United way too much respect and credit. Again, this is not this bashing on him, <laughs> you know. But I think, it's, I, I think it's just that whole oh, the next premiership, the this and that. We showed today we absolutely battered them. I think that's the slogan of the show we battered them. Yeah, we, we did, them. <laughs> we absolutely rinsed them. And think about it, we did that on their own patch on Tuesday. Mm. That place is going to be absolutely rocking, mm. right? We mm. Arsenal. Seen them off. Leicester, seen them off. Liverpool, we give them one hell of a game. So we played three top level sides. They couldn't handle the pressure under that. A lot of part of that game in Liverpool as well. They even Klopp came out and said the atmosphere was incredible. Picture that on Tuesday, full house. We are. I'm, I'm just so confident. I hope it doesn't bite me in the ass. This is the playoffs. But I just, how can you not be confident? How, how can we not be confident with this team? And that's what I like to see. I like to see that. I want. If, right, I'm gonna do a test of one. If I get, if I see when there's a grind on Tuesday, if I see anyone thinking we're gonna get a one-one draw, I'm gonna slap you. That's hell. And Des, you're gonna be the first one. Des, Des gonna, I know Des gonna say, "Oh, it's gonna be one-one. Oh, there's no chance." And as well, you might no, no people in the comments. I, I don't want next. I don't want. Oh, it's nothing because I said I think I was. It was me and like a couple of us. Big results. What? 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 What's this? What's this, Matt? 
Why are you shaking your head for? No, no. I'm saying all these people that come out with things like we let a goal in, or, you know, that was really bad, or we haven't had a result against this team for 50,000 years or something like this. That's my point. This team That's my point. breaks records. This we, is my we point. We had the worst start. That's exactly it. I'm agreeing with you. I'm agreeing with you. At last, well, Matt, listen, right. you. Matt never agrees with me. He never agrees with no, you. No, I do. I always agree with you. No, I think, to be fair to Stephen, in, in, in the playoffs, you don't want to say, yeah, we're going to win. Yeah, we're going to win. We're going to Wembley. You don't say that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Say, you know, you know, you can be confident. We've got no reason not to be confident. We're, we're, we're you know, we're the team. We're the team in this playoffs. We should win it. And all we've got to do is be our best and have a little bit of luck and we'll, we'll walk through it. But it's the playoffs. And there's never been a playoffs when a load of bad stuff doesn't happen. People get sent off. We've had it happen to us. You know, mm. you get crazy goals and all kinds of craziness happens. And today was kind of crazy because we should have scored four, four five, six goals. So mm. may, hopefully we've had our craziness. It'll be normal services resumed on Tuesday and we actually scored all those chances. But mm. you just don't know. And, and the only way we're going to lose is if we beat ourselves. If we turn up and we're the, we get our heads right and we perform like we can, they can't live with us. 100%. 100%. Do you know what I want to say on this door, though? Do you know, I, you know, of course, I'm not trying to plug anything, but I talk on other things. And, and since we've become confident that we're a good side, we get called arrogant. You know, and it, it's kind of the way with football. But... We're just really, really confident that now we've got the team to go and do it. And everyone's going, oh, Forrest think they're doing this. Forrest think they're doing that. Yeah, because we see it every week. You know, we see it. And and I, I heard Sheffield United fans saying, oh, you, you had a poor end to the season. A poor end to the season. We won <laughs> nine out of ten games. We got beat by the team who've been in second all year. We put out a fourth game in ten goal, days. And stuff. You know, and still should have won that game. You know, and we were terrible in that game and we lost by the stupidest child, schoolboy goal and everything. If that's bad, OK, give me bad. We'll, we'll walk the league next year if we're that bad all year sort of thing. But exactly. So it's, why you know. shouldn't we go into these games? You know, it's all it's all cliches, isn't it? And we can be we all can be guilty of it sometimes if we just don't want to put, put a neck on the line. But the, the reality is we're a bloody good football side. You know, we're a bloody good team in this league. And whilst there is one or two things that could be better. Mm. We could have finished that game off today. You know, and we would have had no doubt whatsoever. But that's why we're in the championship as well. Mm. That's why some of these players find themselves there. But, that, but, but that's... In terms of what we see, we are better. We are creating is... chances. We are we're getting the better chances. That was the key thing. Morgan Gibbs-White gets in behind Colback or McKenna or something. And there's nothing for him to to do, whereas we're getting in the play in the positions. And and I've, I've made this point about several reasons in the past. If you're getting in positions to score goals, you're going to win football matches. You're absolutely going to win football matches. If you're not getting in a position, if the strikers aren't getting on the end of it at all, you ain't going to win anything because you ain't got the chance to do it. And and I think going into that game on Tuesday, we've just got to be full of the fact, full of safe in the knowledge. That we are better than them, and and there's no sort of arrogance about that. You know, go out there, be confident, take it to them. Game over by half time. Talks cheap, isn't it? But look at look at what we're looking at on the pitch. What is it? You know, you tell me if that's not an impressive team this year. I mean, you've got to be an idiot if you can't see it. So it is what it is, and it, we were today, and we have been for the whole of the season, apart from when we had the old guy in charge at the beginning. <laughs> and we had an awful team apparently they were oh, awful, really. filled with awful players that couldn't play football and he needed other ones oh please don't mind don't get don't obviously no, if, no, you him, if you talk about him Matt's going to have like another, another hour of him just, just <laughs> some bars in him so Matt let, let's, let's, let's keep it let's keep it PJ let's keep it PJ um, my people in the comments who was your man match for, for today's game I will go for the panel um, I'm going to ask you Stephen who, who was your man match for today's game it's between two players, Johnson okay. or Cook. But I'm going to go for Steve Cook. How come? What, what an outstanding, well, take aside, you know, all the stuff he's been through since the Bournemouth game, just to come back and put a performance in like that. Absolutely leader, 
let you know from the back just con- control the game just you know johnson was outstanding at the top as well but steve cook for me just you know cleared up everything you know if they did get behind he was there you know not 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 pulling mckenna and waller up with a bit of a mess but he was just you just know he's there he's just that other brick wall being a brick wall <laughs> yeah. it's just levels you know and then you got sam and go it's just yeah cook for me 10 out of 10. brilliant player um Matt, who's your who's your man match and why? I, I, at this point, I really don't like picking out any players because I thought as a whole team, I thought they all played well. I thought we really worked hard. You know, performance, you know, ability is one thing, but I think we worked incredibly hard. Every single one of them and the subs, they, they put everything into it and they were really knackered at the end. Those two are good calls, I think. You know, Brennan... You, the only thing you're knocking down for is not not finishing the th- you know the, the things at the end and, and cook again. But I'm going to give it to Colback all day because I've yet to see him make a mistake shock. today. He did that's, everything. That's no, but I, you have to. I haven't given it to him all season, have I? I haven't. I just I let me look it. back. Let me look back. No, on the, on the I never do. I've let me look to back Yancy, on the shows. Reece, all kinds of different people. I never give it to Colback, but he deserves it today. He scored the goal. He did nothing wrong. He's playing out of position. He's played out of position half the season or more. He scored more goals than he's ever scored, half of, the, half of them at full back. He's done a worldie in there that no one believes he actually meant. And of course he did. And, uh, you know, so let's get... I want to top off his season and give him a man of the match because he's earned it. OK. Uh, Just in case this. he doesn't do it again in the last two games. Dares, <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, who's your man of the match and why? Well, I can't, I can't argue too much with all the, all the guys. And I've been looking at the comments of the, as you've been speaking. Cook played really well. I thought yeah. McKenna had a real, real good game today. You know, really solid. Um, Colback does what Colback does. Johnson is our best player. It's as simple as that. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to make no bones about it. I've said it for the last few weeks. He gets under, under, undervalued sometimes, underappreciated by it because we've seen so much. But for me today, uh, oh, one other mention is Samba. Samba was immense in what he did. You know, the, when they were putting crosses in, he was punching it and he was getting distance, he was taking it, you know, under pressure. I thought I thought he was brilliant at what he had to do without having to be without having to be a shot stopper so much today. But the, the basics, you know, were brilliant. But the, the one for me today was Ryan Yates. I thought he was man of the match by a mile. He just did everything in that midfield. He swept up. He had that big guy to deal with, you know, at times. The, the one we've mentioned a lot, Berg. And I just thought he, he was he was on the premises at every opportunity. Whenever they got the ball, he was there. You know, whenever we got the ball, he was there. And and when he needed to fall to his knees and get a free kick. And, and, and that's the experience that's growing within his game. I just, I just, he's, he's come such a long way. And again, I never got into the, 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 the with or without Ryan Yates argue and, and what people at. I was very sitting on the fence with how he, uh, how he was as a footballer because we wanted him to do well, but he wasn't doing so well. But this season, sorry, this season has been absolutely immense. And I thought today was one of his best games of the season. And I think. Again, we might just start undervaluing what we've got there. Mm, you know what? I, and I'll the people thinking... you were just showing those things, how we don't mention Surridge after today as well, clearing one off the line and, yeah. and making yeah, it we've got about him the as first well, goal. Yeah. Pivotal. I mean, again, it was a little bit like you felt like he could have done more, but he did a hell of a lot, didn't he? And he was just like the service wasn't quite right. And how, you know, he deserves a very, very honourable mention, I think. Hundred percent. I, I think I'm, I'm going to agree with you, you Des. I think I, 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 people know how much I like Ryan Yates. I mean, he, he, he worked hard for the club. I, I like. I think Ryan Yates for me was one of the match. I mean, we, we could talk about like, uh, Jack Colback as well. I think I think he had a great game left back. Yeah, he scored his goal, but all around, I think yeah, yeah, the easy game as well because playing Ben Osborne with him, like. What did Ben Osborne do? That's why I think. 
He didn't, he didn't, he didn't even dare, did he? He just looked oh, at him and said, no, this, thank you, and went backwards. And he did this, yeah. and he did this, and he did this, and then he passed it back. <laughs> exactly. He just, yeah, um, but for me, I think he was, he was, he was right next to me. My, my man of the match for me, but like I said, he, the, the, the whole, we, I don't know who mentioned it, the whole team was fantastic. I mean, we bought, I put all around, I think Ryan Yates, he dealt with experience, um, experience free, Chief United midfield in Bergwin, uh, Oliver Newen, and um, who's, who's the other guy? I don't know what the other guy? Fleck as well. So for me, Ryan Yates for me was, um, was my man of the match for today. Right, um, the hour's up. Been another fantastic show. Um, let me ask the best question. Is, is anyone right? People in the comments, is, is anyone nervous now for Tuesday? That's another question I like to ask. Stephen, are you nervous about Tuesday? Excited nervousness, confident okay. nervousness. No, this is completely different to the other playoffs we've had before. This is a different manager, different team, different mentality. It, this is nothing. This is kind of close to the 2003 Paul Hart team. Mm. Everything in between, this this is completely different. This is, I know we can have egg in our face and we've talked about arrogance and so on. Anything can happen. It's, we're not guaranteed to go through, but how can we not back them? Like I said earlier, we got to back them. I don't care what any neutral, any outsider says. We know our team. We know we can batter them on, on Tuesday. And you know what? If we don't beat them by 3-0, I'd be a bit disappointed, to be honest with you, because I think we're that much better than them. 100%. Yeah. We, we, we got to just, you know, if we turn up. And Tuesday's game is all about how, how the game starts. If we set our stall out, it's going to be a long 90 minutes for them. It's going to be a very long 90 minutes for them. Because if, if they are scared we hit them today, you can imagine at the city ground on Tuesday. You know, with Spence and Johnson just running at them, running at them. Davis can maybe coming on or even starting. We don't know yet. You know, mm. what I just don't hope is that they do get an early goal and then we are, well, oh, here we go again. Playoffs again, nervousness creeping in, but I can't see it. Like mm. like Matt said, where can they really harm us? They've got no pace. They'll have to rely on long balls or lumping in the box. You know, and another thing I'm going to put to the three of you, can you can you see us not scoring? I I think, how can they, can how can they stop us scoring? I think, I, I think, I can't see us doing a blank. I, I think we could definitely score because every time we go forward, we can talk about. And I, I'm always being critical with Ziganel. Every time. We... You, one other key point, Ben, sorry, is we don't have to win this game. We can draw and we we go through. Yeah. yeah. No, we, go, oh, no so, we, need, we need to score. We need to score. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the, the, the problem is with these playoffs, I don't trust these playoffs. Like, yeah, if, if, if anything could happen, because remember, it was the, the Yeovil game, 2 0. And. Mm-hmm. Then they come to Agua and they beat us 4 1. This is why I'm a bit. Something could happen. Because unless, but when I mentioned, like, before the start of the game, everyone's getting their predictions and everyone's saying 1 1. Then we come to Agua and we'll smash them. Uh, it doesn't work like that because these players are just mad. So I'm, I'm, I'm asking you, Dez or, or Matt, any of you nervous? We'll go through Dez. Are you, are you nervous? Are you, are you confident that we can get. The result yeah. that can take us. I started there. by talking about as being football fans, didn't I? And we're creatures of emotion, and, and we're passionate, and we we do what we do. Um, and so, of course, there's going to be something there. You know, there's going to be something where we feel it. You know, it's almost when that ninety minute, when the whistle goes at ninety minutes today, you start thinking, "Oh no, we've got to go for it again." You know, we've got this build up again for the next three days. Don't get me wrong, it's much better than being 2 0 down or 1 0 down or 1 1. But you still got that sort of lingering doubt because you know what football is. You know, you know how quickly it changes. But then on the other hand, I said as we progressed today on the show, um, we, we just have to be confident, don't we? And it's okay to be confident. You know, it's absolutely okay to be like, we can do this. And it's not us that need to be convinced. It's the players. It's the manager. You know. And and if we get, if we go out there, apply yourself. You know, the, the, not us. We'll apply ourselves in the stand. We'll do our job. If the players apply themselves, do what they're good at, keep creating those opportunities. You know, they will score goals. And it's as simple as that. I believe we will score more goals than Sheffield United, in in most games. 
I, I got a lot of stick, because you know, Dor from Johnny, the Sheffield United fan, for saying we battered them. That's part of the uh, comment there. We battered them in the first game. That's what gave me a lot of confidence going into the playoffs, that we could beat one of these so-called top sides. But I just think we've got we've got the edge on the mobile. We're a better football side. We're a better prospect, you know, and we've just got to go out there and believe that. And if we get that first goal, you know, that that is important. The first goal is is massive, and if we get it, it's game over, isn't it? Game over. Um, that's what Liz, Matt. Are you are you like are you any nervous, or are you just like we can do it? We can do it. Well, you know, like we've all said, anything can happen in football and you've always got that at the back of your mind and, you, you know, you can all end up with egg on our faces and so forth. But it's not only OK to be confident, it's essential you're confident and especially the players. And if we can't be confident in this team after what we've seen this season, when can we ever be confident? You know, we owe them our confidence. We owe them our backing. And... I think they believe in themselves and why, how can we not believe in them with what they've done this season? There's no reason to have not be confident and it's essential that we are. So, you know, I think you have to be confident, but you have to also be wary, don't you? Because anything can happen and you just have to believe in yourself and do the best you can do. And that's what they did today. They left nothing out there and that's all you can ask. And if you lose, you lose. That's football. Mm. You know, you haven't got to fear that. You, you know, you fear is the only thing to fear itself, isn't it? Like they say. So, you know, they've just got to go out there, play their game. If they win, if they lose, so be it. But if, if they play like they can, they will win. There's, there's no doubt about it. 100%. Yeah, just right. so you know, there was one thing I took, I picked up from all of that. When, when Cooper played that incident at the end down, of course he's going to do that. Do you know what I mean? He, he, he'll be fuming. He'll be fuming with... Clarence's decision, it'll be fuming with the defence, you know, conceding it and, and, and that late. But what else can he do? He's got to, he's got to keep them players riding high and, and doing what they need to do and, and believing in themselves. And I think, again, we all know we've got the best man to, to go into this game that we've had for a long, long time. Better than any other. Uh, Billy Davis, Paul Art, for me, we've got, we've got the best motivator and the best man manager going. So, I think we're in a perfect position. Can I just say one quick thing about Cooper's mind games? Did anyone else hear that? <laughs> this, is why, this is why I don't believe what Cooper says no more. So, I don't believe at all what he says. Apparently, apparently, he got the media, is the Forest Media crew, not the film called back Yates and Davis in training to give Sheffield Knight did any kind of spy to look at it and go, oh, are they fit? Because if you watch the footage of the training, first team training the week, there was no Yates, no Colbert, no Davis in shot. But yet they were in the squad. Right, team. And, and they were all reported to be carrying niggles and all this yeah. kind of stuff. But apparently Cooper played the main game. Davis, the same, no, Davis was player. always Davis was always fit. Yeah. This, so this is what this is why you should not believe what Steve Cooper says. We might have Grammy on the bench on Saturday. We don't want on Tuesday. You never I know. Wouldn't. I you never know. Put it past him. You never know. Like Low, I know he can't play on. I know Low can't play on Tuesday, but he might even play in the final. You never know. So don't believe what Steve it, Cooper says. But we love you, Cooper. Steve Cooper. He's a, he's, a, he's a legend in our eyes. Right, it's been a great show. Uh, thank you for the two hundred twenty-four people that has come on to the channel. Mm. Uh, much appreciate as well. Um, what's going on? The, the vlog tomorrow morning. Um, it's a crazy one. I've, I've, like I said, I've never seen Matt cry, cry like a bitch. You're not going to see any of that going on. <laughs> um, I've never seen Des so excited. All I wanted to say how how the game was, and he was he was, he was on the next level. Des was, but it was, it was a great day. <laughs> it was a fantastic day. And um, like I said, people, thank everyone for um, for like I said, taking your time for the watching this review show. Um, like the vlog comes out on tomorrow. I'm I'm gonna do I'm gonna do another show. I'm not gonna do a, a, a preview show with a Sheffield United fan. I'm gonna do something different on a Monday. Um, so if any, any Forest fans want to come on the show and talk about talk about Forest, message me uh, on uh, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, or email me. If you are if you are out of Nottingham or out of anywhere around the world, message me and get on the show because it, I'd I'd love to hear from you. 
because like I said, we're, we're in a fantastic time with Forest as, as Forest fans, and um, it's been similarly like we, we had um, what's his name from Canada. We've had so many people from, from, from around the from around the world. People get in contact with me. I love to hear from you, and it, it's, it's good to watch. Like I said, Monday, I will do show Monday at nine o'clock or half nine after the looting game. I think, yeah, after the looting game, I will, I will. Um, you show if, if you if you fancy it, Des, do you fancy coming on, Des, or do I need to spend you? Do I need to spend you for three games? Well, I'll just let the guys know. Dor told me I needed a rest in the week. That's a kind way. Kind way talking me off the channel. So, so I'm just keeping my appearances because right behind me, there's actually a barbecue going on outside. But I thought I better come in, otherwise I'll lose my place going forward. <laughs> so. <laughs> Yes, well, I'll do. Yeah, right. <laughs> so people, I think I will do a show. Um, I'm, I'm not going to do a, 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 a previous show before uh, Tuesday game. Forest fans, message me, email me, and a lot, and we'll, we'll, we'll sort it out. Wait, wait, wait. We've got a legend who's coming on there. The man himself, oh. Kevin Campbell. <laughs> Come on, you red! <laughs> Kevin Campbell! <laughs> he said we were going up. The legend yo. He said, uh, Kevin, this, this this guy sent me some. Why, people, if you want to see why Kevin sent me, I, 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 this is the, the, he's, a, he's a legend. Yeah, you should play it. Play it. You, you play it. Where is it? Where is it? Where is I it? Children Kevin, I've got to. I'm the one. Wait, wait. <laughs> Thank <laughs> 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 like, legend Kevin Campbell. Yeah, oh, what a legend! Brilliant. What a legend! Well, I'm well, okay. Thank you for coming on. Thank you, David Johnson. Thank you to everyone that comes to Like we, we can do something different um, on, on on Monday. Uh, but like I said, we get to. I might message Kev. He's not if he's not busy. We might bring Kev on if he's not busy. But he, we know he's a busy guy. Uh, I'll, I'll mess him tomorrow to be here. But it's been a pleasure, people. Like I said, if you are new to the channel, please do hit the like button, subscribe if you're new. Make sure everyone subscribes to do daily as well. If you want, you know what? Before we go, match, um, Matt, talk about your merch. Any new oh. ones you're coming up with? Well, yeah, too many. They keep me busy. It's got it's like fever pitch now. Like I say, I'm going to do my season review special montage of. All the best moments tomorrow, I think. They've forced me to do it because, I'm, like I said, I'm already, there's going to be a playoff one set for it, I'm sure, I'm sure, or, or, yeah, subject to availability. Um, but also, I must mention the under-23s tomorrow. Another yeah. big game for the club. Let's let's do our bit for the club. Get down there. It's free at Stoke. Reedy, and all, Reedy, who was incognito at the game today, which I don't know whether he's allowed to be there, but I saw him and he's, he's undercover in his disguise with a moustache on, but he was there today. Go down and support his team tomorrow. Oh, it's really I've got, I've got work tomorrow as well, so I can't even go. So, good luck to the under-23s tomorrow. Um, I, I hope they win, like I said, both Andy Reid and um, Mr. Rogers Dave, as well. Dave, Dave Rogers as well. Dave's um, cousin. Yeah, Alan Rogers' cousin. So, they, they've done so well with that team. But, um, yeah, it's, it's good times to be a Fox fan. I'm, 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 it I'm really is. It, it, yeah. and, I, and all Forest fans are loving it. But, like I said, today... Today's a fantastic result, and the biggest. I think it, it's, it's, it's two days one is is the one of the biggest games because, like I said, as a Forest fan, I've not been to Wembley. I'm so excited, and you know, really, really the my chest is hurting me at the moment. At the time, but um, I'm I'm excited. I'm excited. But it is what it is. But like I said, people, it's been a pleasure. Stephen, thank you for coming on. Matt, thank you for coming on. And I'm not gonna, I can't bore to say thank you to you. There's a lot of love for you already. Um, <laughs> But yeah, everyone make sure to subscribe to Do Daily. Like his link is below, and as well, if you want any merch, go and message Matt. His link is below as well. Get some merch off Matt. Vlogs at ten. Shows coming at nine, half past nine on Monday, and we're back again for the vlog on Tuesday as well for the big game. Everyone, happy days. We won, and everyone smiling. Peace, love, everyone. Up the forest. Cheers.